1st of May, it's just after midday on Wednesday, Jacrain and Herule Jeg Tajak Ari, the 14th day of, of um, the beginning of spring or uh, February for you and me. And this is Manx Radio's Man in Line. It's me, yeah, Phil going back again. And it's as it's Valentine's Day today, and a change from the norm, I'm hoping that our regular contributors, and indeed any new contributors, will focus on what you love about your MHKs, what you like best about the government, and what you love about the Isle of Man. Could be in for a quiet programme then. Um, but yes... Uh, your programme, please do get in touch. Uh, 66 13 68 is the number. And it does appear as though David Quirk has already um, lit the switchboard and is keen to talk to us, apparently about buses. But uh, David, I do hope that you will also tell us what you love best about your MHKs. Um, <laughs> I did buy a notice. Uh, I must admit, Rob's, uh, to me now, is is a lot better. I know he's engaging something in the village, which links on to the story which I wanted to talk about, was the bus service yeah. around the Isle of Man, especially in Onken. Because I know uh, Rob uh, Collister was actually going to do some consultation on that, and the department or the minister was going to do some consultation on the buses. And I just wondered, Phil... With regards to the, the not the demise of Two as Isle of Man, but was it the contributory factor that um, it was an anti-competitive practice from uh, the bus company against them, which I believe there was. Government seems quite good at that, doesn't it? Um, it, um, it, it it uses the excuse that well, well, there's there's not enough private sector. Um, uh, resource available so uh, we'd better set something up ourselves to make the most of it and make sure that the service can be delivered and uh, often if you are in the private sector it's quite difficult to compete against government well that's the issue how can you compete against government when uh, you don't pay road tax uh, the insurance is covered by uh, probably a block insurance covered by government and the other thing too you, you get your maintenance done at Ellerslie or the bus garage, wherever it is now. So how can you compete? How can you legitimately compete against the government? And why don't we call them in a little bit more? Uh, and I'm going to ask the, well, <laughs> probably drop it in a little bit, uh, the Office of Fair Trading to investigate them. They did investigate them years ago, a few mm. things, because there was a number of anti-competitive practices going on from government. Plus two, they get free fuel don't they? Who pays for the fuel? The taxpayer. Yeah, yeah. So, you, you tripped me up on the, what I was going to say. <laughs> well, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> well, well, I still, no, am I sorry about that? No, I, I, that's probably part of my role is to, is to uh, ask some searching questions from time to time. Well, but yes, uh, uh, anything about the government that you particularly like, David? Uh, or indeed the Isle of Man, what do you like most about the island? Uh, the Isle of Man is still a great place, great place to live. If anybody's listening across there, we do great things. We're relying more on charitable, uh, which worries me a little bit because the ch- charities are struggling all the time. You look at them now, we've had a loss of some of the businesses uh, in the hospitality section. Section. I know we struggle all the time now to get um, meals, uh, take people out on trips on meals, uh, and 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 get a, a good deal. A because sometimes the chef doesn't work on a, on a Monday, or they're short staffed, or they can't take that many people in. And sometimes it's only fifteen people we take out, and places are struggling to do mm. that or get the expertise. Uh, but it, the place is great. I'm looking forward to the summer. You look at the crocuses coming out. The daffodils are coming up. Spring is on the way, and summer follows. It's a very promising time of the year, isn't it? Uh, with uh, yeah. in the garden, everything's starting to peep through, and uh, yeah, a g- great yeah. time. The other thing I must say, you too, yeah. I've not got a vendetta against camper vans. Oh yes, uh, somebody suggested that maybe you did, but uh, and no, I haven't. And it's not because uh, no, this, thank thank um, uh, the big fella upstairs. There's nothing around me in uh, in Birch Hill. But there are some places, and I'll ask people who live in Onken, 
maybe to come on and say what they're suffering. They are suffering because of camper vans, old camper vans just lying about. And I'll uh, channel anybody to go to Belgravia Road near Onken Park and look at the American one that's there, which has grass growing under it, and it's got that many stick-ons and gaffer tape on it. And I, I just wonder why, A, the police won't do something, and B, the DOI, with their expertise there, get the vehicle examiner out and have a look at it. And mine, it, it trips me up another one too. What are they doing with the old vehicle testing centre? Uh, a good question. I'm, I'm not sure. I know they've got a new one, but uh, what, what the old one is being used for, I don't know. Well, if it's not getting used, are we going to sell it? Or, or get some money in. They're going to need money for the budget, aren't they, next week? I'll well, to it. get in touch with your MHK and, and get them to ask the question. I've already done it to Rob. Yeah. Cheers. OK, thanks very much, David. Bye. Cheers. Um, so a texter has, um, has, has texted in, probably not quite in the spirit I was hoping for, what I love about the government, the fact they forget who they work for. Uh, OK, that's, uh, it's, it's sort of in the spirit. Um, and then uh, another texter there saying, David Quirk always whinges. What positives did he achieve whilst he was an MHK? Um, a little bit harsh, maybe. Um, uh, he didn't seem to be whinging that much uh, in, in the call we've just had. Maybe, I, maybe I'm looking at things with rose-tinted spectacles. And then finally, Manx Will has got the message uh, through to me about this uh, drainage issue, that which we sort of touched on. Uh, yesterday and more particularly on Monday and this was in relation to well I'll read the text long story over a year or two the drainage of water from the site uh, known as Waterworld Bird Sanctuary as part of the Balaf Currux this is now dry and others are being flooded we have contacted uh, deaf ears and just get brick walled around different departments um, and presumably deaf ears is, is a, 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 an uncharitable uh, pun on deafer. Uh, maybe maybe I'm, I'm making that up, I don't know. But I, certainly I have spoken to the deafer media minder and they will uh, try and answer this question. Uh, so I, I'll get back to them um, with the more detailed text. There were some texts that came in yesterday, which I thought we should mention. Um, one, well, let's see, the first one, I, I, I well, there was a, a WhatsApp message on this too, which I, unfortunately I, I haven't worked out how to how to copy, but the WhatsApp message was basically saying, well, how come if, if they're so happy in Scandinavia, is the suicide rate so high? Well, I'm not, I, I don't know. I haven't had a chance to check to see whether that is the case, so I'm, I'm having to take the listener's word for that. Um, uh, and then another text, perhaps the Scandinavians are happy because their taxes are spent in a better uh, way, uh, as you seem to know all about it. Well, actually, I, I wasn't claiming to know all about it. I was just hoping to provoke some uh, discussion and reaction. Um, uh, but as you seem to know all about it, do they overspend in their infrastructure, education, police, etc.? Can you let us know, please? Thank you, Kenny. Uh, well, sadly, Kenny, I, I, I was only um, provoking discussion with that, so I'm not, I'm not so sure. Um, then some other texts that came in, um, perhaps not quite in the spirit of what you love best about the Isle of Man. Um, some residents must have crazy web searching as none of the usual suspects' facts add up. Uh, I believe after the wheel was invented on the island, it was broken up in case it rolled down the hill and hit a sheep. And that was from Tom. Um, just a note, before the last election, we didn't, didn't see hide nor hair of those looking for votes. Uh, we live in Garth. And that was from Daphne. Um, so that was a few of the texts. There's a few more texts coming in. And um, let's have a look. Um, my favourite thing about the Isle of Man. Oh, this is good. Yes. Chips, cheese and gravy. And the outback. Yes, sir. So there we go. Yes. Uh, chips, cheese and gravy. Wonderful uh, feed. Um, especially on a cold, wet, miserable day if you're looking for some comfort eating. Um, now then, let's see. There's, there's a text here. How does that... That doesn't seem to start in the right place. Um, um, no. Uh, just come back from a trip around Europe 
uh, about 5 to 10% of the wind turbines we saw were seized up and not working when the others were probably too expensive to fix. Uh, cheaper to build more using green grants. How green is that? They look to be less than 10 years old too. Uh, so that was from Dave. Um, what else? Oh, are you full time at Manx Radio now or are you still involved with the Southern Commissioners? Well, I am still involved with the Southern Commissioners and uh, um, I, I have a flexible working week. Uh, I'm certainly not full time at Manx Radio. And uh, if if you have a, any concerns, uh, Jerry actually rang me up. Uh, this morning and reminded me that I'd switch the answer machine off and I must switch it back on again and I haven't quite got round um, to that. And then something says here, haven't you noticed? Um, thanks. And that's the same texter who'd said, are you full time at Manx Radio? Um, so mm, interesting. So I'm not quite sure what that uh, that's all about. Um, maybe they could give me a call. Uh, uh, sadly, the uh, callers have been... Um, discouraged from uh, ringing at the thought of having to say something nice about the government um, but hopefully someone will will ring some of our uh, well someone who's never rang before 66 13 68 is the is the number to call and it would be good to hear some new voices and indeed the old voices uh, but I think particularly seeing as how it's Valentine's Day only once a year wouldn't it be nice just to, to, to share a bit of love and and uh, tell us what you actually think uh, is good about the government? And here, here someone has done that on, on WhatsApp. So, my favourite thing about the Isle of Man is Sector 9 Mountain during the TT. Uh, great to work with the Orange Army, and that's from Jason. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Uh, some fantastic... Uh, uh, little video clips appear and now on social media trying to encourage people to think about coming over to the TT, which is good. Um, oh dear. <laughs> Des, uh, Des, what I like about our MHKs is they can be voted out. <laughs> um, and then where are we? Swagelock Engineering are in the old test centre. So this is um, uh, Billy uh, providing an answer to uh, David Quirk's question earlier. Uh, Swagelock Engineering are in the old test centre after paying for the new test centre. After paying for the new... Oh, did they... Pay? Oh, right. So they paid for the new test centre. That's interesting. Um, and then... Uh, laugh out loud. 10% wind farms not working in Europe. What a load of... Um, and I don't think I'm allowed to say that word... Um, uh, on air what a load of something that statement was and that was the the the, the previous uh, statement that or text that we'd heard and then my favorite thing about the isle of man is uh, is the jerry from ronig my favorite contributor to the show so there we are uh, jerry from ronig and um, you're so, someone's favorite and some other texts that we got in yesterday um this was an interesting one. If you if you made it a free phone number, you may get more calls. I rang once and was held on for 30 minutes, so it cost me nearly 10 quid, and then was told you had run out of time, so never got my point aired. And that's from Charlie. Well, Charlie, if uh, anyone is listening, uh, Charlie, in, indeed, if Charlie's listening, uh, but anyone who's listening, if you want to, uh, if you're having difficulties uh, in terms of uh, the the cost if you send a a, a text or a whatsapp message uh, into the studio uh, the the normal numbers apply which are let's 66 13 68 or 166 177 for text or studio at manxradio.com if you want to send in an email um, which won't cost you anything then uh, we can potentially call back uh, people if if they are struggling to, um, to 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 fund the calls right so what have we got now another uh, whatsapp message in my favorite thing about the isle of man is that you can walk downtown and see the same crazy fun or lovely characters ramsey is full of them but i won't give them away you'll have to find them yourselves um 
And that's good. So let's see. Another my favorite thing about the other man is its accessibility, accessible beauty, just a short walk, and you can access green areas and beaches at the tip of a hat. Uh, pity people don't stop and just look at what's around them and appreciate what we have. Uh, we, we, yeah, we're, we're getting into this set, uh, the love uh, I, I feel. I'm, I'm feeling the warmth of the people of the Isle of Man here. Um, well, Phil, my favourite thing on the whole of Tinwald, four ministers promise of all about how they would help me, but still disabled people are not able to use a bus. Shame on all of them. Uh, so perhaps that's not a favourite thing. Um, uh, Big John from Laxey is my favourite. That's good. Uh, I'm sure Big John, if he's listening, will be delighted to hear that. Uh, OK, and then uh, another message in here. I want to say thank you to the government for providing a wonderful bus service from Douglas to Ramsey. It goes every half hour and the drivers are always friendly and kind to anyone who needs help. Thank you again. And that's from a text ending 488. Um, and then... Mr. Gorn, are you in charge and running Manx Wireless as you never seem to be off air? That's from Fran. Oh, well, I'm not sure. Fran doesn't say whether that's a good or a bad thing. Well, I'm certainly not in charge and I'm not running things, as as is evident from anyone who's listened to these shows. Um, right. My favourite thing about the Isle of Man is that we're not prisoners here and if we don't like it, we're free to leave. That's good. Uh, What I love about the Isle of Man, the continuing relentless excitement that one day the point-by-point rebuttal will be found before the Newcastle. (laughs) Okay. Uh, Or the Newcastle Russian High School, before the Newcastle Russian High School will be built. And then a government worker was told not to look out the window in the morning shift because he would have nothing to do in the afternoon. (laughs) Oh, dear. Uh, yeah, OK. Um, a WhatsApp message now. Hey, Phil, I do like the fact that it's possible to speak to real people face to face in the tax office. I'm not a fan of everything uh, always being online. So that's good. Um, probably a good time to do this and have a listen to some of these. <laughs> Well, Fran has answered my question. Um, is is it a good thing or a bad thing that um, I'm on the man in line? And uh, sadly, it's not a positive one. It's a bad thing. Government is paying for its own assassin, uh, which is a bit harsh, I think. But anyway, uh, Howard is uh, on the line and he wants to tell us some, uh, yeah, something really positive because, of course, uh, it's the 200th anniversary of the RNLI, which was uh, formed in the Isle of Man, and that has to be a positive, doesn't it? It does, and uh, I was looking for some paperwork yesterday, and I come across a a folder that I've got, and people remember uh, in the RNLI, in the lifeboat stations, there used to be little leaflets off the uh, various lifeboats. And this one I've got, I don't know, 30 or 40 in this. I don't know where I got it from. It was many, many years ago. Uh, of all the different types of lifeboats that were around the the British Isles. But the uniqueness of this is, uh, well, Sir William Hillary, there's a bronze statue right in front of your studios hmm. uh, on the Douglas Head. He lived a quarter of a mile down the road in what was the Fort Anne, before Dame Anna Negum had it knocked down. Um, he lived down there. There's a large bronze plaque in what we used to term as Number One Garden, opposite the Villiers. And there you are know, various other aspects of it. The, the man is actually buried in Douglas in um, St. George's Churchyard. Yeah, yeah. But there's very little publicity about. I know they're doing a couple of exhibitions, but um, there's very little publicity for the general public and for the Isle of Man to have five lifeboats of various types, two of them being the latest um, the heritage you see, the heritage railways, heritage this, that and the other, well this exceeds the railway heritage because of the, its age and it could encourage people to come to the island, but I've heard very little about it 
Well, uh, one positive then. Another positive that uh, that I can share with you is uh, tomorrow I'm I'm due to uh, do some recording in relation to the All at Sea exhibition, which uh, is very much about this, and hoping to get a perspective programme uh, on it uh, fairly soon. And I know for the week... Uh, surrounding the 200th anniversary, Manx Radio is looking to play uh, some various archive uh, material relating to the RNLI. So uh, certainly there are plans afoot uh, at the radio station. So uh, hopefully there'll, there'll be more uh, there. And of course, if anyone's listening from the RNLI and wants to promote anything, uh, just get in touch and uh, I'm yeah. sure Manx Radio will be keen to, to um, help with that. Um, well, as I say, that's that's fine and good. That's brilliant that it's going on the radio, and it will keep it in people's minds. But um, for the, 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 I haven't seen anything advertised anywhere for any exhibitions. The House of Manannan that'll have one small one there. Um, I don't know who's doing it, but the likes of the um, the Max Model Boat Club here, those lads, they've. Well, I used to be a member of it many, many years ago, and we used to do exhibitions for the RNLI. Now, I don't know whether they're doing anything at all, but they have a a large collection of the various types. Well, that's only one aspect, but this here, having started on the island, continues on the island, and, um, it's, well, it's not publicised, but it should be, for this one special anniversary, and again, they're chirping on about heritage, and I'm one of them. But this is, you've seen nothing of it, and it, it, it's a very, very special year. It, indeed it is. It is, certainly. Uh, certainly there was the big um, memorial um, or commemorative uh, service at the lifeboat station. Was was that early in January, I think that was? Well, that's on uh, Sir William Hillary's birthday. Yeah, it's the yeah. first week in January each yeah. year. So that was, this that... was one of the ones where the Manx Model Boat Club, we used to put an exhibition on down in the People's hall down there in Finch Road. Mm. And, and of course uh, that used to be a big thing, didn't it? M- uh, model boats. Uh, yeah, the, you know, yeah. There were various boating lakes and, and you'd uh, pe- people would be going out and uh, sailing their boats before the uh, availability of motorised uh, versions were, were there. Oh, yes, and, uh, yeah, yeah well, it was a big thing. It used to be at uh, Port St Mary. Yeah, yeah. It was one of the last dedicated, uh, how can I say, designed for yachts. That's when the yachts were there. They were free-running yachts, etc. But that's going off the subject. Um, the <clears throat> exhibition that the, the, the Model Boat Club used to put on down there, they had dozens of boats, uh, all appertaining to the RNLI. And somebody would always come over from the RNLI for the uh, the church service, etc. And then they'd come back over to the, the hall on Finch Road, um, the pensioners' hall, whatever they call it nowadays, I don't know, for cups of tea, coffee, biscuits, and everything else, and it'll be convivial. But that's only once a year. That's one one day a year. We've got this special year this year, the 200th anniversary, and they should have the flags flying and the buntings up and making a celebration of it. Well, hopefully, everyone is listening uh, is, is going to take that on board, Howard, and 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 make it so. Um, before you go. What's your favourite thing about your MHKs? <laughs> the resignation. <laughs> Steady now. <laughs> there must be something positive. There are a couple in there, but um, I don't have a great deal of faith in what is uh, what is running around at the moment. Um, they seem to have uh, excuses, excuses, excuses. Not reasons. Well, on that sunny note, uh, we'll move on because Bonzo is, is waiting for us on... Uh, line two and Bonzo is going to talk about positive vibes and the beauty of the island uh, which is encouraging or is he? Are you there? I uh, don't hear him well maybe if if oh that's because I've got the wrong fader up <laughs> um, but maybe this time Bonzo are you there? Yes uh, yes, I'm here excellent yes. good um, yeah, yeah, yes um you know, in a in a departure from my usual combative um, combative tone, yes. What is marvellous and lovely about the Isle of Man? Well, port airing mm-hmm. in summer when the sun sets. Absolutely, it is glorious. And if you're 
you know, there with your uh, with your um, drink um, outside the bay or outside the cosy nook when foraging vintners do the thing there, or indeed foraging vintners itself. Like that. And the sunset, if the visibility is right, then shows the mountains of Morn. There's a blazing in the uh, in the sunset. Yeah, there's just nothing like it. It's truly beautiful, it's isn't it? It really is. And even in the daytime, Port Erin Beach, uh, this, this is bound to result in, in people throwing things at their radio sets. Um, is is must be the, the uh, at least in the in the top uh, top one or two uh, beaches in the whole oh, of the oh, island. Gosh, oh gosh, though, in the in the summer, it's, it's you know, again breathtakingly pretty. Yeah. Yeah, and um, when they they have sometimes the um, the sail training trips come in and they're sort of sitting at uh, at anchor in the in the bay. I mean, it it, it just it, it is absolutely it's lovely, stunningly beautiful. On the subject of stunningly beautiful, what's what's your favourite? What do you love most about the uh, members of Tinwald or your your MHKs? Maybe uh, depends on how many beers they're buying. Now, <laughs> Uh, that, that, that. Um, no, no. I mean, June and um, no, June, June and Michelle seem to be um, seem to be uh, performing their, their roles admirably. Good. I, I can't, I can't, I can't see any problems with that. Excellent. Uh, and what do you like best about what Isle of Man government is doing at the moment? Mm, well, that's going to be a bit hard to come <laughs> up with, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Ask me after the budget. You're quite fond of the wind farm. Yes, but that's not really an Isle of Man government thing. As I've said before, that's a good, you know, that's economics. Mm. That's economics and, of course, the, the care for the environment. That's not... Um, and indeed, if the Isle of Man government had really cared about that, we would have had them ooh, at least 20 years ago mm. because the funding was naturally put in place for it. Good. Well, I've enjoyed this positive uh, engagement and... Uh... Um, I'm just yeah, waiting for really Julian really now really to ring up and. and... Get too often. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, thanks very much, Bonzo. Cheers. Yeah. Um, okay, uh, a few more. Well, actually, probably a few more of these. When the man in line's not on air, call Manx Radio to leave your opinion for broadcast on 682 631. Well, there's a few more. Well, loads more positives actually. This is this is making my day. This uh, my favourite thing about the Isle of Man is the huge number of experts we have: viro- vi- vi- virologists, virologists, historians, war experts, maritime engineers, climate scientists. It's fantastic. They all manage to get qualified simply by reading stuff on the internet. And wonderful, they take time out of their busy schedule to call the man in line each day. And that's from Steve. I think that's possibly a little tongue-in-cheek. Uh, I love the community spirit and the help o- others offer to each other. I love our freedom, uh, emergency services help. I love... Uh, the local radio station and many more things and then fast to my film my current favorite thing is douglas corporation and its blue budget book and the many pages of redacted figures surprise the fourth estate aren't asking questions about the redacted costs and that's from andy and then um trevor aka bonzo has never been so positive on the wireless well i wonder I wonder whether Julian is going to be as as positive as Bonzo uh, was. Uh, Julian, uh, what what credit are you prepared to give to the government? Well, I wasn't going to come on, mate, but um, my ears started burning, so I thought, well, you know <laughs> what? Why not? You rose um, to my challenge. I did. Well, you know what? I agree with Bonzo. The sunset at Port Erin is absolutely magnificent. But I'm just wondering, if you take the logic the same way, what are the poor people of Ramsey going to make? Because there's a guy that does magnificent sunrise photos that I always admire in the Manx newspapers. I'm sure you've seen them yourself. Mm. Um, How's he going to feel about 100, almost 1,000-foot-high wind turbines in the way of his sunrise pictures that are going to be in very close proximity, no more than nine miles away? Those tiddly little things we're looking at are over 40 miles away. So they're going to be kind of big. 
well perhaps the the sun rising uh, uh, with those in in the in the uh, the foreground is, is going to make even even more beautiful pictures who knows well maybe if you squint a bit um <laughs> Credit given where credit is due. The MHKs that voted vociferously to keep the Southern Swimming Pool open. Um, you know, I thank all of them for that. Mm. And I'm sure a lot of people do. I mean, I think it was going north of 6,000 people that petitioned to keep it open. Yeah. Um, I heard on the news earlier this morning that Mark Morley from Port Erin Commissioners is going to be having some sort of a meeting with government about the future of the Southern Swimming Pool. Um well, let's hope that Mark Morley is uh, completely on side with all the thousands of people that want that pool open in the south. Um, and I don't quite understand how it can be closed anyway, because as, as you've heard many times, it's a statutory entity with a statutory board. Uh, subvention payment must be given, as far as I'm aware. That, um, that's certainly the not... understanding that uh, many people have, um, although uh, quite what, what if I think the uh, government had said to the pool board was uh, we won't be able to give you the extra money uh, you need. Uh, and the pool board was then left with the, 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 uh, the only decision it could take, which would be to close the pool because it couldn't afford to, to, to keep it open. Um, but, yeah, the, the, unfortunately, at the time that uh, the pool order went through, um, lots, lots of things were assumed, uh, but not written down. And these days, if it's not written down, it doesn't exist. Seems to be the, uh, the, the, the thinking in government. Well, that's right. I mean, you know, and now you've got um, this issue with the lanes uh, at uh, NSC, um, and also, of course, if the Southern Swimming Pool is supposedly costing me, which apparently it wasn't, because the board never asked for any extra. Mm, um, mm. What about this five hundred and fifty thousand pound overspend at the NSC? Can we have some detail on that, or is that sub not subject to FOIs either? I don't know. Um, be interesting to find out exactly what's gone on with that. I mean, that's over half a million on a swimming pool. I mean, what you know? How, how do you spend five hundred and fifty thousand pounds on a swimming pool with no discernible difference, except that two lanes are closed because the cars are falling off? It certainly sounds like a lot of money, doesn't it? Um, anyway, uh, Julian, we have another uh, caller, uh, Kelly yep. Kelly from Australia. So I'm not sure is she calling oh, from right. Australia. So if if she is, it's probably best that I take her call because uh, she wants All to right. say what she likes about the Isle of Man. Thanks, Phil. Okay, Cheers. no problem. Um, so then, let's, with the wonders of, of uh, computer science, uh, Kelly, um, what do you like about the Isle of Man? Hey, Phil, um, I've got to say what I love about the Isle of Man is the fact that I was born there, yeah. raised there, had five of my children there, and they are so vehemently manx, they haven't taken up, they've been here almost 50 years, and not one of them has taken up Australian citizenship because they're manx. Wow. And I've, I've, I've come home as many times as I can in the past years, and they're, they have too, my eldest daughter's coming home this year in May, and um, they just they just love it. I love the Isle of Man, and when I come home, it has changed, but it hasn't really changed. It's still the Isle of Man. You can go to the West, and I mean this in the nicest way. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> you can go to the West and go back 100 years, or you can go to Douglas, and things have changed. Things have so changed in Douglas, but it's still good and happy and safe. Children are safe on yeah. the Isle of Man. I th yeah. I think and we, the, we, we the, often, because we live here, um, it's, it's very easy yeah, to... take to, it for granted. Yeah, absolutely. And you don't realise how good it is and how safe it is. And Yeah, I, I don't know. Um, when I come home, people say to me, Pearl, would you not like to come home and stay here? And I go, um, if I was a single entity, yes. I'd come home tomorrow and never leave, but... Mm. I have children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, so it kind of, you know, but I come home as often as I can. Yeah. Oh, well, that's, that's really, and, really nice to hear. Uh, is there anything that you really like about Australia just while you're on? <laughs> um, um, there's lots of things I love about Australia. Um, I have nine children still, and I don't, think, I don't think that they would have achieved what they have achieved if I stayed on the Isle of Man with them. Mm. I have to say that. That's true. Um, but they all still have this hankering. They love the Isle of Man, and it's in their blood. 
Yeah, and yeah, my granddaughter rang me the other week. She said, Nana, I need help with my homework. And I'm going, oh, gosh, I left school 58 years ago. It's, it's worrying, isn't it, model. when, when you, 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 you look back and, and work out those sorts of numbers, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I went to Russian high school. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, um, yeah, and, um, yeah, she, it, was, it was geography, I think, and she, mm. had, she decided to do um, an assignment on the Isle of Man. So she rang Nana for help. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Oh, so well. The Isle of Man is just... Can I say, Phil, yeah. I do listen to the Man in Line uh, most nights. Mm. And I don't always agree with the callers, mm. but um, David and Howard, and especially you, oh. I just love to listen to the Manx accent. I oh, well. To my kids, listen to <laughs> I say, listen to this fella. And I yeah. don't know what they're talking about, <clears throat> Mum. And I go, but just listen to the accent. <laughs> mm. Good. Well, thanks very yeah. much for the, for the call. Um, and uh, yeah, it's very, very good of you and, and great to know that we have listeners as far afield as Australia. Thanks. Um, so a, a few other uh, texts in. I don't think we are doing too badly over here. I, I do think we need to start looking outside the island. Our problems are the same as everywhere else. And I would far rather be on our lovely island. And that's from Liz. Um, this one, I had to read this one out. Hi, Phil. One of my favourite things here is Manx Radio and appreciate you personally for standing in at the Man and Line helm. Best wishes to all. And that's from Crystal. Um, Then this is one uh, text uh, ending 768. There's an abandoned van on Bayview Road, Port Air, and the tax ran out last year, but nobody seems to chase up vehicles with outdated tax. It must show on the systems. And that's from Sue. Well, Sue... I'm sure if you called Port Aaron Commissioners, uh, that's the sort of thing that they can uh, they can potentially help with. Uh, now, what else have we got? There's a oh yes, uh, we've got a caller uh, which we'll get to in a second. Um, right to the person that doesn't believe my statement about the numbers of non-working wind turbines in Europe, I suggest you follow the four thousand mile route that I took rather than just dismiss it. Um, so that. That was uh, that. Uh, Hi, Phil. Just back from a walk around the Oakwood, and it's a lot different today as yesterday when I was there. There seemed to be a lot of raised voices from public to a deaf worker regarding keeping their dogs on leads and under control. There is signs up to do so as work is being carried out there. Why can't people just adhere to what they're asked to do? Uh, And then... Yes, the Isle of Man is okay, just so long as you don't take poorly and need a bed in hospital. A friend of mine has been in A&E for nine hours now and still there, no beds. Uh, We're getting more and more like England every day, and that's from Enid. Um, How can we get a vote of no confidence in this terrible government? That's not the positive message that we were looking for, but uh, it's uh, it's your right to, 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 to call. Uh, or text in. Uh, Colin's better, though, so 66, 13, 68. And on the subject of callers, it's probably time we uh, brought in uh, Tony, who want, who uh, has something positive to say about MHKs. Is that me? Tony? Yeah. I, I missed it. Yeah, OK. Yeah, I've got something positive to say about Stu Peters. Right. A voice of, a, a voice of reason. He basically says... The change of the public network to greenhouse to cut greenhouse gas emissions is expensive and pointless. So we've got a voice there that says, well, this is madness. And Daphne Kane's response was, well, the rest of the planet is doing something and we're not, which is totally erroneous because the rest of the planet, which is the vast majority is America, India and China in population terms, they're not doing anything. Mm-hmm because they're still building coal power stations and burning coal. So while we're running around spending huge amounts of money trying to do something sensible, they're not. And until they do, I don't think Daphne Kane is going to be very successful, or any of the Isle of Man government, for that matter, not in changing the climate. Anyway, but the good thing is that at least a voice of reason is out there. He's just not very well listened to, I guess. Yeah. Certainly not in the, council, in the council of ministers or in the MHK's level, because they're all dead set on spending all our money 
on something that will never do anything, will not make any difference, unfortunately. Well, thanks. I just t- hope somebody wakes up. Yeah, thanks for that, Tony. Ashford should stand up as well. Yeah. Because he, he actually told the truth about two years ago and said somebody's going to have to pay for this. Yeah. Well, um, we haven't heard who's going to pay, but it's going to be us. I've got Eddie on, on the other line, and we've only got two minutes left. So no, I'll, I'll, I'll go. You take care. Great. And the Isle of Man is wonderful. Good to All hear right. some positives there. And uh, Eddie, uh, Eddie will probably agree with this. Uh, hi, Phil. The best part of the Isle of Man, uh, the best part of the Isle of Man, is the unspoiled, airy Stain and Kringle Park. Eddie. Yes. Good day, mate. Hi. Yes, um, just a quick one. What do I like about the Isle of Man? Well, <laughs> it's the sense of humour that some of the what I call the real Manx people have. Yeah. And uh, just to give you an example, I'll just recant a, just a very quick joke that was told me by a Manxman uh, in the typical Manx accent. And he was about a Manxman who died and went to heaven and was stood at the pearly gates, waiting to get in. And St. Peter said to him, um, OK, you want to come in? Where are you from? He said, well, I'm from the Isle of Man. So St. Peter said, well, I'm sorry, but you can't come in. And he said, why is that? He said, because I'm not making spuds and herrings for one. <laughs> OK. Yes. <laughs> thanks. Very thanks, good. Bill. OK. Well, thanks for that, uh, Tony. Um, Howard will be pleased to note that uh, Russian Heritage Trust is putting on an RLR. RLNI, it says here, R, R, I think it was RNLI, exhibition on the 12th of March at the Heritage Centre in Port Aaron. So that's encouraging. And uh, uh, what will be beautiful um, about the Isle of Man when it happens on the island will be when this useless, useless administration of MHKs, etc., time runs out sooner the better. Not quite the, uh, the, 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 the mood I was looking for. Um, but um, what else have we got? Um, yeah, we did the airy stain one. Uh, don't encourage Julian. Read some text. <laughs> That's from uh, Sue. Um, so yeah, I've enjoyed that. Great to have some really positive stuff on the show. Um, what, have we got another one in there? Yes, this is the one. I love the show. You are doing a grand job. Listen to the man in line most days, and the thought thought it was a wonderful idea to get people to give positive views about the island. Shame you get the same old callers and texters, but those callers and texters did say lots of positive things. Um, the Isle of Man has so much to offer. I visit as often as I can and would move there in a heartbeat if I could. Always good to listen. Well, that's great. Uh, there are some really good positives coming out of this. Um, and uh, someone agrees with Stu Peters uh, and says that the voice of the people and reason. Well, that's all from me. I'll be back next week. Coming up next, Nenji's Tree with Christy D. 60 years serving you as the nation station. This is Manx Radio. Peter, what's Kelly's eye looking at today in the sunshine? Well, of course, you're in Onken, you see. Brilliant sunshine. Um, I'm looking at something which has its base, three legs, and also has a thistle. Yes, it does. I couldn't argue with that. It is a base. It's a base for a statue. Statue. And there aren't many statues in the island. Um, public art is, is sadly lacking. But here in Onken we have one now. And um, a statue of a man with his arms folded. And he's looking out across Douglas Bay. And um, beneath his feet, between the thistle and the three legs, both of which you know, have a reason, it says Steve Hislop, 1962-2003. It also says this was unveiled by Jeff Duke OBE on the 5th of June 2005. We're talking TT, of course. We are indeed. Steve Hislop was a champion, a world champion, I think, from recollection. It's a newly created garden where there used to be a garden, but the whole of the garden has been totally revamped uh, and finished just in time for the unveiling of the statue. Um, on Mad Sunday 2005. Now, the thistle and the three legs you say are significant. The thistle, obviously, is uh, a Scottish connection. Well, that's, of course, where he was born. He was born in the Scottish border town of Hoyk, 
chose Honken as his home latterly. Uh, and unfortunately, of course, he was killed not riding his, his motorbike, but in fact in a helicopter accident. The race fans wanted to commemorate him, so there was subscriptions, etc. Sufficient money raised, in fact, to pay for two statues, and one is going to be erected also in, in Hoek. Locally, Jim Davison, I think, was coordinating, and he contacted me to see if the commissioners had anywhere in Onken where the statue could go. The family didn't particularly want it to be on the TT course. How about this site? Because at that time, when the approach was made, Summerland uh, was under discussion for being the site of the famous but never happened TT Museum, yeah. or the TT Experience, and so it would have been ideal, of course, overlooking that. But equally, in this position, you can see the statue from the promenade, or part of the promenade you come along, and for the family's sake, of course, it's not far away from, from home, um, because the view from here is good. I mean, on the day we're in, just look behind us. fantastic view. Deep blue sea and the sky. A most terrific view. The whole sweep of the promenade there. That's it, yes. Uh, all the development going on, gaps and gaps being filled and, and, and so on. To complete the picture, of course, there are two large plaques there, one a, a little about Steve Hislop's life and the other one his uh, race successes. Listing all the, all the victories, his Isle of Man TT victories and his other major victories. Part of Island Life for 60 years. This is your Manx Radio.